a Mac. Yeah. Do you have a Mac? Usually, do you do the corners where you can like shove it into a corner and then all of the things come up separately? Wait, you don't have hot corners? No, I guess I'm not as up as you. It's like the best thing about having a Mac. What's it called? Hot corners? Yeah. Yeah, like you can shove it up into a, I'll show you here. So, yeah. hey guy. Well, yeah, just remember, I can't see any. Oh, there you are. Jump. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah, you can like shove things up into like corners and all sorts of fun things. Okay. Okay, wait, so, so where is it? Up you got to do it in the settings. Okay. Here. All right. So we're going to ha go ahead and... Um, Start the call since some of you guys are getting on. We were just having a little bit of fun. Stop share. There we go. Um, so, like I said earlier, grab a pen and paper. This might be kind of helpful to you. Um, how many of you kind of feel like you're in the headlights, not really sure where to begin in a day? Like what tasks you might want to accomplish that might be moving the income needle? Anybody ever been there? Oh yeah. yeah. So um, I have found what's really helpful is find systems and. Them. I might go ahead and mute all for now just so I'm because I'm like a okay. by my fault um okay so one is I want you guys to challenge yourself to write down all the things that you typically do in a day and for the next couple of days write all the tasks down as petty as they may sound um I mean embarrassingly enough I was putting ribbons on my gifts and Katie White looked at me and she's like that's not income producing. And I was like, you mean no ribbons anymore, Katie? I don't know how I could go on with my parties without putting cute little ribbons on things. Like I was doing dumb stuff, right? That's not income producing. And I was like, you're right. It's actually been very life changing. So if you might be putting something like ribbons on prizes or something as petty as I was doing, you might want to just cross that off and let go of it. In this business, you are going to grow and it's not going to be as simple as it was when you were just solely, you know, you, yourself, floating along doing parties. Now you have people that you've started to onboard, and you're like, oh, crap, they need to earn their kit. Oh, my gosh, that recruit just onboarded a new consultant. How do I help that new recruit help her onboard? And so, obviously, you can imagine as you're building leaders on your team, your responsibilities grow, right? And so... Um, that challenge I think will help you a lot. And so the next step, if you are taking notes would be to figure out of those tasks, which ones are income producing and which ones of them are not. And if you need help, I'd be happy to help you tell you which ones are not, um, or find a business buddy that maybe you can look over each other's lists and be like, Hey girl, let's have a come to Jesus moment. That's probably not so income producing. Okay. And grant yourself grace of releasing that. Um, things that might not be super income producing would be maybe there are tools that I, as your black jacket leader have created for you. Right. And you don't need to go and reinvent the wheel allow me to take that off your plate, if you will. So for example, if you find yourself as a leader trying to create all the tools just so you can have like a little logo on it that happens to be your little team, that's <sighs> relinquish that. You don't need it. Grab it and put it on your own link tree, if you will, if you do something fancy like that. But feel the freedom to copy and paste. The reason that I put all those tools out there is so that you don't have to go and do that and you can have more of your time. Do you hear my background noise? Isn't it lovely? <laughs> you can have more of your time focused on the things that matter the most and that would be personal relationships. Because personal relationships is what grows this business. I didn't start doing Google Forms and all these fancy things when I was a young TC sales leader, even ESL, I was gleaning from other leaders and copying and pasting those specific things, those specific tools. So I'm sure it's no secret, you know, on our, our team link tree, for example, we have like a welcome document for new consultants. How many of you find that as a shocker and you have no idea what I'm even talking about? And it's okay if you don't. Um, but if you do, um, just know that that's there, it's updated. I hire somebody to update it 
every month. And so you can count on that. That's a tool that's in your back pocket that you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. And so I'm going to share with you just briefly what that looks like um, as I bunny trail here, which I did not bookmark it as this. Here we go. Team, team link tree. So for example, I actually just like updated this all the other day. New welcome consultants. Okay. So let's say you have somebody that you just onboarded and I do need to update this FYI. I'm tattling on myself, but this whole document is something that you could easily copy and paste and send over to a new recruit to get started. Something so simple, and these are like techie tips, if you will. Um, let's say you have somebody thinking about joining the business. I don't want you to go and spend hours of your time trying to reinvent the wheel when this is like accessible to you and it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a pride thing being on a bigger team that you have all these amazing tools. So being that I didn't come from a team with all these like crazy images and what I didn't fall on a Chris Carlson or a Sonia Eckel team, my desire and my heart was to just be that leader for you guys so that you have it easily accessible to you and you don't have to work as hard as I did. So take the tools. Don't feel like you've got to do everything I do. Okay, because it's going to leave more time on your plate to develop those relationships. And guys, that's what, that is what is income producing. Simple phone calls, simple text messages. Every single one of you on here, I have a personal relationship in one way or another. Some of you are newer on our team, but it wouldn't shock me if I've sent you a message in some way, shape or form saying, congrats this, or, hey, how are you doing? Because you know what, at the end of the day, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so you need to trickle that down. That's what matters the most. Um, finding out what drives that person um, is what builds leaders. So moving on to step number three, write these three things down, ready? You're gonna either dump that task, you're gonna delegate that task, or you're gonna do that task. You with me? Okay, so dump, delegate, or do. All right, so um, some things like as you grow in leadership, like I'm looking at some of you, some of you are newer TCs. Congratulations, Trevor and Lolly. I know that you're new team coordinators and it's so exciting. And so um, this call was probably more diving deep into like sales leader and up, but I commend you guys because you're wanting, I've heard from your leaders, that you're really, really wanting great things out of your business. And so the fact that you've taken the time to actually invest into your business and grow at even a level of TC already reaching higher is commendable. So congratulations to you guys. Um, now finding a system is probably your, my saving grace and it's gonna look different for everybody. I can tell you what works for me might not work for Missy or what works for me might not work for Katie, right? Um, so you've gotta figure out what is, um, what is working for you? What do you love? Do you love like a paper system? My upline, she was more paper. So I did, it didn't like, it didn't cross with me. I didn't understand why she was so happy with all of her paper and sticky notes everywhere. Drives me nuts. I would like no paper, honestly. Um, that makes me happy, but you might be all paper. Like, I don't know. So this has been something that I've kind of like morphed and it's changed and I'm happy to share with you. Um, Trello has been life changing for me for probably the last three years. And if you take the time to just play around with it, like how I used it last year is not the same the way that I use it this year. I'm always morphing my business and I'm sure you are too, but I would encourage you to find something that works. And if that looks like a paper notebook and you're chicken scratching and that makes you happy and you're efficient with it, do those things, girl, like guy, whatever you wanna do, but like you just gotta find something that works. So um, I'll come back to like the Trello thing and we're gonna dive more into like maybe individual questions. I know some of you are just popping on. I am recording the call, so if you, missed it like the first three points at the beginning, feel free to go back in and watch the recording. Um, so the fifth thing is time management. All right. 
Now, I've gone to many leadership conferences, and some of you have too, and I would say that the most beneficial thing is to spend 80% of your time on the 20% of people that work, want this business to work. And on the flip side, you're gonna spend 20% of your time on the 80% that are just kind of casuals, if you will. Does that make sense? So don't let the ones that are super casual suck you dry. I mean, bluntly put, right? We can get so caught up in answering all these petty questions. <laughs> Kathy's laughing because we had this conversation yesterday. I was like, grant yourself grace. You do not need to be everybody's everything, okay? All right, so um, a good example to that is like having um, a semi-new recruit ask you, what are the host rewards for this month? Um, I'm sorry, that's posted everywhere on our team page. It's in the back office. It's on Ask Nora. Flip and open your phone and find it, right? We want to lead a horse to water, but we can't make them drink all the time, if you will, right? And so give that person time to find their answer, and you will be so much more happy and efficient. So oftentimes you'll find me triaging my text messages. And as you grow in leadership, this is totally an okay thing to do. You don't need to respond right away. Now there are some people that have earned, when they call me, I pick up the phone. And you know who you are. You, exactly, you know who you are. If you call me, I pick up. If I can, if I'm in the middle of emergency, no, I can't. But you earn that right with me. And so when it's a brand new consultant, they probably have my attention for about 45 days. And if they've done something, they've earned that right. And I will pick up the phone and be more of their mommy, if you will. And then I start leading them out of the nest and empowering them to do those things and to find those things. And I do communicate that with them. So I always say on my first call, this is more like a tennis match, if you will. I'm gonna hit the ball to you. Now I expect you to hit it back to me. And this is gonna go back and forth for a while. Now, if I feel like I'm hitting the ball to you so many times and you're not doing the things that I'm asking you to do, don't be surprised if I'm like, hey, we really don't have anything to talk about. Until you get parties, I can't really tell you how to host coach, right? So um, hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Um, it's okay to not respond for maybe two to three hours. And that's not because you're trying to be mean. That's because you're trying to tell them, hey, listen, it's okay to find it yourself. And oftentimes, more often than not, they come back and they say, never mind, I just found it. Kathy, by the way, your girl did that the other day. Um, anyway, okay, so the next thing, because um, I will come back to the systems kind of thing, we'll dive in a little bit more with that, is, wait, what'd my girl do? She came back and said, never mind, you don't need to respond, I already found what I was doing. Ah. Anyway, okay, so I kind of divided this into like, oh, Emery would love to say hello to all of you. Say hello. Hi. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Go bug your dad. <laughs> okay, so the other thing is I took a piece of paper, and I encourage you guys to do this too. On one side of it, I want you to write personal, and then on the other side of it, I want you to write leader tasks. Okay? And you're going to dive down to like the top five things that you do that are non-negotiable. So for me, on my personal tasks, I said customer care. That's an absolute must have because as leaders, we're always losing parties to new recruits. It's just the nature of the business, right? We're always needing more parties. You know, once you have a dead party calendar, it's like, well, you really don't have a personal business anymore. So I always made that very, very, very important in my business. And I can honestly say I've never really had a dead calendar. Thank God. Um, the second thing is uh, your VIP group of some sort. I've always made that pretty much a priority. And it served me well when COVID hit for example. Those are the people that kept me afloat when my party calendar basically like tanked and I had to start moving everything to online. And I'm sure some of you here can definitely attest to that. Um, and it's also been a funnel of keeping those people that were thinking about booking or thinking about joining. You see Emery in the background. Um, thinking about booking or thinking about joining, eventually get on board. And here's an example. I had a really, really, really tight friend down in South Florida prior to even starting the Norwex business. 
And she literally text messaged me while I was camping the other day and said, hey, I'm ready to order a mop. I need a mop like yesterday. And I was like, it was so crazy. Two of her friends reached out to me that week, an old neighbor from five years ago that hosted a party. And she was like, hey girl, I need a couple things. The very first girl I've ever introduced Norix to was one of her best friends and I used to clean her house and I recruited her right away since then she's dropped off she reached out to me that week so you know what my response to Carrie was hey listen instead of buying that mop I think it's time we have a party what do you say and she goes yeah now I have friends five and a half years later she's been on my VIP group this entire time so I just say that to say, I'm sure some of you have had that experience before. Sometimes it just takes time and building relationships with your customer base, with people that are thinking timing is everything. So customer care, VIP groups, onboarding new consultants is an absolute priority to me. I make sure that they're earning their kit. Why? Well, besides the fact that I want them to be successful, I selfishly want $450 in shopping sprees, and you should too, right? You can see all of my Norwex. I'm basically swimming in Norwex, okay? And I want you to be swimming in your Norwex too. <laughs> so onboarding new consultants and what that might look like, I'm going to kind of take you into my Trello in, in just a little bit on how I keep track of that. But the main thing is that you have some sort of check the box that you're doing for them and you're touching base with them quite frequently, especially in their first month. Okay, the fourth thing in my personal recruit, or my personal side of the paper is um, finding new bookings and new team members. So however that looks, oftentimes it's just responding to project broadcast text messages when they respond back, oh my gosh, I love this stuff, thank you so much. Yes, I got it the other day and blah, 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 blah. Hey, awesome, wonderful, would you like to be a VIP customer of mine? When there's a deal, I'll send you a text. And when they respond yes, I put them into a little tag, tag on project broadcast. And then I also shoot them, hey, listen, I'm just throwing this out there, would you be willing to host? And oftentimes, they'll say yes, or maybe, maybe in the future. So I put them on a list. So always have a list of those that are willing to book with you now or in the future and always have a list of those who are thinking about joining, okay? I've been plugging more often our work from home on your phone group and as leaders on the call, I would love for you guys to make that a priority of sharing that with your team members. Maybe you personally feel confident about recruiting and you don't necessarily need that group. That's totally okay. But for your newbies, all you want to do is get them into a rhythm of simply asking the question. And that's a lot easier ask, if you will, than saying, hey, have you thought about being a consultant? Instead, you can just say, hey, listen, I think you'd be great at this. There's a group on Sunday night where a leader goes live on our team and just explains the business opportunity. Would you like to be invited? That's an easier ask for a newbie than the first, right? So get them into a rhythm of just doing that. And as long as we as leaders are utilizing that group, I'll continue to do it. When I feel like there's five people on the uh, live and they're all consultants, I was like ready to <laughs> ditch it because I'm like, well, this is not moving my income needle. So who the heck cares? I'm just going to cancel it. But I did have a few leaders and um, some of you were on the call reach out to me and say, this has been life changing for me and I really would love for you to continue. And so I'm gonna give it one more month and a try. And if you guys are willing to partner with me and make this like a thing where we continue to do it, then I'll continue to offer that. And I think it could be really life changing for you doubling your downline. I keep on saying double your downline, Katie and Rogerson. Um, we were talking about this the other day. I'm like, this is the year where you could literally double or triple your downline. Like, let's get in. We definitely want to, you know, book those parties, but like, let's shift while this team, like while Norwex is growing exponentially, flip and get on that train and recruit like nobody's business because it's going and it's going up fast. <laughs> Everybody's jumping on board. Okay. Um, the fifth thing is host coaching. That's an absolute must. So those five things that I just named off, hopefully you're, they're your top five or some of them are your top five. But in my personal business, that's non-negotiable. Those are the things that I have to do. And so on Mondays, that's my time. That's me Monday. 
I am focused on my personal business. All right, switching over to leader tasks, things that I have made a priority is one, it shouldn't be any surprise to you because I've already mentioned it like three times, is building relationships. As silly as it sounds, I mean, Sue Camp, how many times have I called you this month? <laughs> right? Like, I mean, we just constantly like, you know, I'll check in. Those of you who are personals to me probably get more phone calls, more texts than say people that are underneath other leaders. But nevertheless, I try to check in as much as I can. And I would expect you guys to do the same thing. Treat, you know, your personals, your personals. And if you feel like there's like orphans, if you will, keep that relationship going as much as possible. Um, you know, again, we can't be everybody's everything, but you know, when somebody pops into your brain, which oftentimes I'm like driving down the street and I'm like, oh, I haven't talked to her in a while. I'm going to give her a call. I called Rachel Ben on the other day. She didn't get to pick up, but I was like, I wonder how she's doing. I wonder how her baby's doing. And so I just give a call then. It doesn't have to be anything formal, no coaching calls. Just have a true, authentic, I care about you, I love you, I miss your face relationship. That's what builds, it builds leaders. It just does. Okay, second one is coaching calls. So I don't, um, offer coaching calls like so formally anymore. But when I was a younger leader with a pretty like, you know, decent sized team and I felt like I could open up a slot or whatever, and maybe I'll bring it back. I don't know. But typically if somebody wants a coaching call with me, I'm on that like white on race. I just am. I'll be, I'll be happy to do that. I'm just less formal about it, if you will, these days. I don't know why, but you find your groove and definitely let your team know that you're available for co coaching calls. But on a coaching call, I think it's good to be a listener and ask good questions. So rather than barfing on everybody, all your things, ask them what they want, hear them, and then ask questions. How do you think you could make that happen? What timeline do you think you could do that in? How would it feel if you accomplished that one thing? you know, and then maybe end the phone call with a simple like, hey, I challenge you to do this, you know, by the next call that we get on. Let me know when that's accomplished and we'll get on the next call. I'm so excited for you. I'll be cheering you on. So simple, right? Um, but that way there's an expectation before the next call. So most of my coaching calls are with my new recruits. So if they never did book that first launch party, they don't get the second call, which looks like, all right, I've got a party on my calendar. Now what do I do? Call. Now if they've got their launch party and they didn't book any parties, they don't get to go on the next call, which is host coaching. How do I host coach? Well, there's nothing to talk about. You don't have any booking. So we're going to go back to the beginning and you're going to, pick up the phone and you're gonna try and book more parties or you're gonna launch yourself again until you do have parties and we have something to talk about. So um, the, the fourth thing that I put on my leader tasks is just simply encouragement and recognition. So this could be a number of things. Um, I do postcards and that's something I've delegated off of my task list. Sarah Brooks is on the call. Uh, she's a sales leader now, and so now she's transitioning into growing her team, which is really awesome. But for the last few years, Sarah's sent out postcards for our, um, our team, like top sales, um, top recruiters, and uh, promotions, that kind of thing. Um, you don't even have to get that fancy. When I was in the beginning, I just hand wrote notes, something so simple with like a cute little sticker and stuck a stamp on it and sent it in the mail. Bye, bye right like keep it simple like you don't need anything fancy if you see that you got like a postcard for me with my fancy name on it like you don't need all of that like I did not start that way just so you know um, simple text messages and voice text messages how many of you have received some sort of voice text message from me like hey you're rocking it this month or Oh my gosh, rock star with like an emoji pounding fist. Like you're killing it in sales. Holy cow, what are you doing? Those little things mean the world to people. And so if you like receiving it from me or from your upline leader that might be on this call, chances are the people that you've onboarded feel the same way about you when you reach out. 
So make it a priority. Okay, um, I'll quickly hit on things that I hire out for. How many of you have an assistant or thinking about hiring some sort of help, whether it be something very minimal, like, hey, can you send out packages for me? Or, hey, can you stamp my catalogs? <laughs> I now use my children to do that, but um, something so minimal. Maybe you just really don't want to do those tasks. It doesn't fill your joy cup. <laughs> And that's totally good. Those are the things that you want to delegate. Um, so when I was doing home parties, Sarah would come over and she Hey, would Ashley. Yeah. I got a question. If I don't know if this is something that you can answer at the moment. I know that it's awesome because you had Sarah and Sarah was close. So she was able to come over and you guys were able to like tandem. It would be great if you know or have your thoughts on if we had someone that was like out of state. If we have someone that isn't close to us, we can't get necessarily catalogs in their hand to do all of that stuff unless you're mailing it. Like, what suggestions would you give? I love this question. Um, so I just texted Sarah. I was like, since you're transactioning out, I'm having to hire on three assistants to do what you did. <laughs> so actually, two of mine um, are virtual, and I'm in the process of hiring the same girl that Sarah is hiring to do local things like shipping out swabs to team members, um, doing those postcard recognition. Um, oh, because I do the cleaning clubs now, that's another like huge task or those engagement um, raffles that we do quarterly. So those are some of the things that like she would come here. So she's gonna come here ideally if we can get her um, once a week and I'll just build up that to-do list with everything prepped for her and she can do all of that when she's here. Um, as far as virtual, Kathy, to answer your question, what tasks do virtual assistants do? Um, I actually, yeah. this should be no shock to you guys. I have a whole, um, Google <laughs> okay, so this is something I created a long time ago and I'm happy to share it with you guys. So we talked about personal business and then team tasks. And although like this might look overwhelming to those of you who are like young TCs or young sales leaders, some of these tasks you might not do yet. And some of these tasks you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I actually do that. So I simply highlighted the ones that I've delegated off of my plate and I've categorized like booking bags, party bags. Um, I, I don't know why, oh, I don't know why I did, that. oh, my party bag for like going to home parties. <laughs> customer care, post coaching, um, just this kind of stuff. Can you definitely share that with us? Yeah, of course. I don't know if you're able to, but I don't know. I can't, I'm on my phone, so I can't really see. Kathy Bobags, there you go. I don't, oh wait, I don't know if you, viewer, there we go. And I'm happy to post this in the, in the leaders page too. But um, team tasks, these are things that like I've delegated. See, I'm starting to like delegate things off to this chick. She doesn't know it yet, uh, but those are things. So, we, like. so you're giving, so she's got access to your dashboard. She's going into your dash. She's going into your Trello. Oh, I got it. There we go. Okay, so this is my, there we go. This is my Trello. There's, there's um, you know, just like my regular tasks and like, the assistance that I have now, and then I've got one more that I'm gonna be adding on. So before you get overwhelmed with this, this is just how my brain operates. I have, re remember what I said at the beginning of the call? I said, write down all the things that you're doing. That's basically this. I have all the things and I'm repeating them monthly. These are just repeating tasks. Um, today is Thursday, okay? So I'm doing this thing right now, and I'm going to archive it when I'm done. Um, Thursday is pretty much done these masks things I can deal with tomorrow. And so when Friday's done, I just keep moving this over. Does that make sense? Now on a like Sunday evening when I'm just like laying in bed and I'm bored or whatever. What? I wanna do two classes again. I'm gonna mute you, Kathy. Um, when I'm looking at my work week, so on a Sunday, for example, I would say like, oh, I need potential recruits. All right, so I'm gonna work on that on Tuesday. Oh, my other assistant, she's finally back from vacation. I have a few things I want to delegate to her. So anyway, in these tasks, for example, you can click on the task. You can put any links in here. 
Um, so I've got the link to that work from home on your phone and I have a reminder set. Um, and this is like Sunday night. So I can reset the due, the due date, right? And make sure I put like a little ticker in my phone, like, hey, don't forget about that. Um, let's see, like, oh, a new recruit, for example. So we've done so far these calls, the first two calls with this new recruit, and I reset the due date for the 16th. She's done the host coaching, and now we're going to go on to the third call, which is like VIP group and customer care. I added her to the team pages, and I have a, like, a simple um, campaign for my new recruits. And again, I'm, I'm happy to share any of those with you guys if you get a fancy with things. Again, in the beginning, I didn't do these kind of things like campaigns and all that stuff. It's just now at the senior level leader, you know, senior level leadership position I'm in, you can imagine where it just keeps, you know, growing and getting more busy. But if it's manageable now, then you don't need any of that. You know, if you're only recruiting one girl a month, you know, and you feel like you got, you know, your ducks in a row and it's a simple like little check mark on a piece of paper, then do that. That's totally cool. The key, the key is just have a simple system. So I'm going to open up um, questions for you guys to ask me on any particular like task um, that you guys want to cover. So feel free to unmute yourself if you've got questions regarding any of these tasks. No questions? <laughs> Come on, people, ask a question. We just know it all, Ashley. That's why we're here. <laughs> Jeez, girl. You're, that's right, Sue. That's right, Mama. That's why you got all your leaders here. That's right. Got all my girls. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't just overwhelm all of you guys, but if you can find like the Trello thing, it's been very helpful. I will say that. So let me say something about Trello real quick, guys, for anybody who is newer or who hasn't popped on Trello, Ashley's obviously lists look very overwhelming. So in my world, um, when she showed me all those a while ago, I sort of kind of shut down and was like, oh, there is no way. <laughs> but I got to tell you, I just hit the Trello world and I started very small, which she told me to do, but it still freaked me out. I started the Trello thing and oh my gosh, my brain all of a sudden literally feels so organized. So my best advice that I can give anybody, even if you don't have a huge downline, start now. Because if you start now while it's small, once things start to ramp up and get big, you will have it in the bag and it'll just be absolutely amazing. It's always hard to go back um, and you know revamp everything that you're doing. So I'm saying if you don't and haven't started it, use it. Do it. So I can show you simple little things that you might not know about Trello. So I'll share my screen with you and just kind of like walk you through if that's, that might be helpful. Um, I do have like a list of like personal things I'm dealing with. And that's just something new that I've started to do just to keep business and personal separate, but yet be on the same board. Um, and because I'm hiring two other assistants, things that I want to take off my plate, I'm starting to add to that. And then I can actually move this whole thing. Let's say move list. And I can actually move it to um, that girl's board. Okay. So you'll see. Now, if I go into Jesse's tasks, I just moved it. Um, I don't know where. I just put that. I think this was right here. Mm -hmm. So um, you can move cards when they're done. Um, Rebecca is the girl I just hired for, like, recognition. So hers looks a little messy, but she's probably got most of my tasks. The cool thing about this is that I can go in and I can click on something. I can set the due date for it so that it shows up in red. So that I'm like, hey, wow, that's screaming at me right now. I need to get that done. Um, and it's also a way of communicating to people that you might want to delegate to. So um, it's worked beautifully with me and Sarah 
for the last two years. And it's nice to be able to go on Sarah's board as I'm like dumping, taking things off of her plate. I can just simply keep the same card and move it over to another board. So when it comes to terms of like hiring help, as simple as they might be in tasks, it's nice to not have to delete the whole board. You know, I can still keep going. Um, if you ever use like Google Sheets, that's a nice way of like keeping track of things. How many of you utilize like Google Forms and Google Sheets? No? Yeah? <laughs> um, so I'll show you quickly maybe just a few things um, when it comes to that. So right now, how many of you are doing like the cleaning clubs, for example? Yeah? Um, okay. I think I just delegated this to uh, Rebecca, so I think I'm gonna go on her board. Um, okay, summer buying clubs, here we go. So I just put my Google form that I send to those people that sign up on here, the link, and then I also put the Google Sheet on here, so it's just easy to, for her to click. But let's just say for sake, we're going into the Google form. This is what mine looks like, right? They fill out the form and on the back side of it, um, when you're going to like edit the Google form, how many of you know that you can click on this like little doodad here and you can set um, it to email? So every time somebody fills out the form, you get an email notification. Did you know that? Then the other thing is this little thing right here, that's the Google Sheet. So that's what I bookmarked. I bookmarked the form and the sheet. And this is kind of what mine looks like. So they fill out the form and at the bottom, okay, we put two tabs. So I just simply copied and pasted all of these names and I put them in a tab down here. So when somebody orders, she checks my order history. So I just dumped off all my customer care to her, which was the first time in five and a half years. It feels like a weight lifted off my shoulder and I have more things to do. Um, like focus on you guys. So anyway, this is how she's keeping track. She tells me like the day that they ordered and how much. So all I have to do is just go into her board if I'm like wanting. And she also sends them a thank you for ordering. She, if it's unattached to the party, she'll attach it to the order for me. Um, again, she adds it to the sheet with the sub A and the date. And that way at the end, you know, at the end of the three months, when you're like, Missy, and you're like, I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know where to start. Something that helped me with the cleaning, the cleaning clubs is, you know, how I did like March, April, May. In May, every week on Wednesday, I said that's shipping day. So if you get your order in before Wednesday, your gifts will be sent out. So that way, at the end of the month, I'm not scrambling to send out 26 things to all these people. It was like in chunks. So, and it was also like building anticipation. They're gonna get their goodies even sooner if they submit their order faster. And so that might be really helpful to you guys. So hopefully you understand the Google Forms and the Google Sheets aspect of it. It's nice for a lot of things. The other thing, how many of you have a Mac? Like a, yeah. a Mac computer? If you're not utilizing bookmarks, um, that is huge. So for me, I like having all my like bookmarks here. Um, any training links that I get questions to often, um, like I'll do my back office Trello host coaching. So I'm sure some of you have seen my overwhelming host coaching form. And right now, don't judge me. It's very, very overwhelming <laughs> because I'm doing like, I feel like three types of parties, like Facebook parties, multi-host Facebook parties, Zoom parties, single Facebook parties, I'm all over the map as I'm transitioning. But nevertheless, find some sort of system that works for you. Google Sheets has been like my saving grace because me and Sarah have been able to communicate together. And so if you're hiring help when it comes to host coaching, like mailing out host rewards or Sarah mailed out like a, hey, thanks for booking um, a party with me. And uh, I think it was like, what, four weeks, six weeks away that you would send that, Sarah? something like that. So she would mail out a little postcard that were, it was like a save the date kind of thing. Cause I was booking. Yeah, it was six weeks. 
yeah, I was kind of booking further out at that point. Like I, it wasn't unheard of for me to be booking three, four, five, six months out. And so I didn't want them to forget that they had a party coming up. Um, what else did you do, Sarah? Oh, made Canva images. So she would log into my Canva, make me the image, and all I'd have to do is just log in and simply grab the image. So these are just simple little things that if you want to bookmark, it's nice things that you're going to often bookmark them so that you're not like all over the map. And if you have like somebody that is starting to work for you to delegate, like even on their Trello, have um, a little board that has all of your information in so they can log in to your Norex website, your Canva, your Google, your Facebook if needed. So that way um, you don't have to constantly like tell them your login information, your password. So it's like a really smooth transition and it may go in steps like you know, if, if you're like me or even like Ashley, you give them a little at a time and see how they do. Um, just give them a, a few little logins, see how they do, and then you can gradually um, give them more. Um, and I guess the trust value, the, the trust builds up. You know what I mean? Yes, that's a great point, Sarah. Um, for me, I'm like OCD A type personality. I think many of you on here are probably more like me and Sarah. You're a leader, and that's probably, it's hard for us, like, as those types of personalities to delegate and to trust. And so even when I was hiring Sarah, I think back to our conversation at Panera, I'm like, I have trust issues. And so I will probably delegate like one or two things. And then if you can nail it, I'll give you a third. And so she's like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, I got more, more, give me more. And I'm like, okay. I think it was two weeks. And then she went, Bleh. <laughs> I was like, all right, she's got this. Same thing I did with Becky, the girl in Arizona I just hired. She started doing recognition. So she took that off my plate, all those images. So she logs into my Canva, makes them all. And Sarah used to do it for me, but she's like, girl, I got to start taking things off my plate as I'm growing into leadership with Norx. So I was like, that's totally cool. It's a good problem to have. Yay, Sarah. You know, so she was doing that for a while and she was just so fast at it that I'm like, hey, do you want more? And she's like, yeah, sure. Let's do a Zoom call. And I'm like, well, how would you feel about customer care? And she's like, oh, I already do that for another senior leader. I'm on board for that. So I gave that up. She's nailing it. She's so fast. How would you feel about more? You know what I mean? And so build that relationship with somebody that might be just quick and just learns fast. Um, that might be able to take things off your plate so that you can go and you can be that mom that you want to be. You know, you can be that grandma that you want to be or whatever, that spouse that you want to be so that you can actually enjoy your time. And you don't have to be working all the time. Like, it was nice. I was just helping Rob finish some of the decking that we were building this morning. I haven't worked at all. I just said I have a call at 1 o'clock. So I've been working, like, kind of Monday through Wednesday. Um, and it's been nice. It's been really nice for a couple hours each time. So figure out when you're working and nail it down, those tasks, and then enjoy life. Because that's the beauty of Norwex. You know, it can be flexible. Ashley, did you share... Um the Norwex form you did for the cleaning club, is that something you already shared with us? I did can't I a, share it? a group for that. And um, if you click on, let me hear, if you go to um, our link tree, which is like underneath announcements. Okay. There we go. Um, I have it in a group down okay. here, cleaning clubs, how to run cleaning clubs. Okay on that you can join this group and then I just set it up in three steps so guys oh somebody's trying to join the group I guess but I went um and did like a little video and then it's step one step two step three very simple so if they well, I just didn't know like your pineapple form for the summer was cute is that on there also or no I think I put it in the comments just because I didn't want all the other stuff to get lost okay there it is Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Ashley, I want to go back real quick, um, following up what Kathy was saying about Trello and how at the beginning it seems so, so very, very overwhelming. If nothing else, just start out by doing your own personal tasks, maybe bill reminders, just something to start getting you in the groove to go there, to put those notes, to put those due dates in and feel your way around Trello. Cause I worried so much about having it 
all perfect and how many boards and how many cards and you don't need to do any of that just start playing with it use it very simply for personal stuff and then you'll start to see how it will just fall into place for you for your business absolutely i think it kind of like allows you to free up mental space knowing that all the tasks that you put on your to-do list for the day you can either move over and say, you know what, I'm just going to do that tomorrow. That's okay. And reset the due date for yourself. Um, if I know I'm going to be in the office for three hours, that might be a heavy day. And I move stuff over and boom, 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 knock it down my list. And I prioritize it from the most important and things that need to get done first at the top and the things that maybe are not so important that could wait if I needed more time, I can move it to the next day. Um, or I can delegate that task. So um, when it comes to Trello, I would say just go in and bookmark it. That's the biggest thing. If you're not using your bookmarks, it's something that you're probably not going to go to. And also it's an app on your phone. So when I'm sitting there at night and I get a text message and I really, I want to respond because I, you know, maybe it's one of my leaders and she's asking me something very important. I will literally respond to her and then I immediately put it on my Trello for the next day. And the first task in the morning is calling Norwex to deal with whatever that thing might be. So I feel like it's just, I don't know, it frees up time. And the other thing is, um, uh, Suzanne Holt told me, touch it once. So if it's something that's like can wait, and it like comes through on your project broadcast, for example, like somebody wanting to do a return, for example, and it can wait, don't touch it until you're ready to deal with it. So touch it once has always been kind of really helpful to me. And that's why oftentimes, well, I will say Sarah knows I miss text messages quite frequently because I do that thing um, <laughs> of touch it once. So I just encourage you to scroll up on your text messages if you happen to adopt that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not intentional, but it's allowed me to just feel the freedom to not have to respond to everything right away and be everybody's everything. So, yeah. Any other questions that you guys might have? All good questions, though. I think that's awesome. I'm just going to throw something in there. I think it's a learning experience, too, if you are the type of person that want to have great customer care and you want to respond right away. Um, you have to learn, too, that people don't expect the world from you a lot of times too. So what I try to do is like, especially with my team, I have hours like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. that they can contact me. If it's without, what's, um, if it's in between that time, they know that they can still text me, but I won't respond to them until I'm working, right? And that had a transition with like COVID um, that it's now one o'clock. That's my one o'clock time because I'm with my kids all morning, one o'clock when they go to nap they might text me in the morning and you just have to be like, okay, just because you're not responding right away and it might be in a few hours, doesn't mean that you're gonna lose a customer. Doesn't mean that the consultant's gonna be like, oh my gosh, they did not respond to me. So learning that it's okay to put that phone down, to put it on mute, so that way you do have personal time. Because as a direct sales business, it can be 24 seven and you have to make sure that you're shutting that off. So that's why like Trello is such a great, great tool to put that on your to-do list like Ashley does. Yes. Airplane mode is a wonderful thing too. So if you're ever like Broop! airplane mode, oftentimes like I have an Apple watch. I haven't been wearing it to be honest because it was dinging me all the time and I was getting annoyed and I would just constantly go back to my phone. So car for those of you who are busy moms on here and you feel guilty about like working, my advice to you would be figure out the hours that you're not working. If you tend to be a workaholic, like I, tend to be. Um, it was helpful to me to figure out the hours I'm not working versus telling me the hours I am. So for me, like Sarah, you know, I'm available to my, my family in the morning. So from like nine to noon, I'm really not available unless it's like one of my upper level leaders that is like, Hey, quick question or something like that. If it's within reason and I can respond, I will. But typically speaking, I really don't respond unless it's between the hours of noon and four. Um, usually like Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Thursday, whatever I'm deciding I'm working that week. So, and summer's nice. Flip and enjoy the weather. <laughs> Get out and have a life. I've, I honestly have recruited more from posting about camping and having a good time. And you know what? 
because of that, I think people are saying, wow, this looks like fun. So you can work and you can do life. You, you actually have a life. I think it speaks volumes. So, and it makes leadership more, look more fun too. So I encourage you guys, have a life. Um, any, any other questions before we wrap it up? No? Um, if you, I always end the call with, if there's anything um, in particular that I could train you on as leaders for the next call that we do, if it's like next month, if there's anything specific, please shoot me a message. If you're wanting, I feel like I'm, I'm, you know, doing all the things and it's hard for me um, as an SVP to go backwards and to remember what was it like to be a sales leader? I was really honestly never a TC. I was a sales leader for a month. And so I really have a hard disconnect in figuring out what is it that helps you guys because my business did take off kind of really fast. Um, so if there is anything that you guys are struggling with or things that I can help you with, please let me know. It would be very, very helpful to me. Um, so I know Sue, I asked you, um, Kathy, I asked you and Katie, I think I asked you too, but, um, please reach I have out. an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Please Let's see if this resonates with anybody. Um, uh, how to identify future TCs and how to get them there. I like that. I like that a lot. Would that help a lot? Like anybody shake your head if you're muted. Would it help? Let's do that then. So, um, is this helpful? Like during the day, is it better than the evening? It seems to be better for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll kind of leave it at one o'clock and then I'll try and do it uh, next month sometime on the one o'clock hour, if that works for everybody. So, all right, cool. Well, thank you guys for jumping on the call. Love you all. It was nice seeing Bye. you. Hey, look, we're twins today. I saw that, Sarah. How funny. I, I'm like, maybe I can sneak and pretend that I'm Ashley. <laughs> Put my hair up. I just need the big earring balls, you know. <laughs> I love my earrings. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see y'all later. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Ash. You're welcome. Bye, Mama. Bye. And I got to figure out where I put this when I recorded it. <laughs>